Another set piece, though, for Campbell. Their fourth corner kick of the match. Here it comes in from Liston. Up goes Genus, and she finds the back of the net. Campbell back in this match. Out for Locke. Matt Locke towards the inline, across the face. Still alive. Jaquel, that'll do it. Tebow Jaquel wins it in overtime. Janus, Wilson whiffs, Nova Vesky. There it is, she's done it. Campbell go through. Lofted in by Betts. Along by Jaquel, he'll have another shot, and he ripples the back of the net. Jaquel doubles up Campbell's lead. Ball off of Kinnaman. Chance here for Robinette. And Lawrence, Corey Lawrence, what a shot! And what a finish! A stunner to bring the away side the lead. The layoff not quite there, might capitalize. Matt Locke, and off the bounce. Deposits capitalizing on a Gardner-Webb mistake. And here's Momo. Working space. A nice cut bat. Matt Locke! And he does it! There's the opening goal! Locke getting some redemption this year with a goal. He missed out on the Big South Tournament last year due to injury. Getting the goal in the final here this year. Nodded along by Reese, and it'll trickle across. Campbell up three to nothing in the final. Myers over the top for Kozmetis. Closed out by Momo. Here's Myers. Crucial intervention. Kozmetis turning. Can he get one back? He does. High point looking to find a way back in. Welcome back to an absolutely Arctic night here in Bowie's Creek, North Carolina, where we're almost ready for Big South semifinal action. There's the whistle. And we are underway in Bowie's Creek. Campbell getting the ball immediately. And what a matchup this is. Jalen James driving forward. Good ball in for Mercer Miko. And now the Blue Hose. Their first touches in what has been a pretty traditional season for them in the postseason. They've come up big two years in a row now as the underdogs coming into this match. And how important it is for the, big, uh, for the Blue Hose to come up with another result in the postseason. Talking to Jonathan Potter this week, the head coach of Presbyterian, he was telling us his team has found ways to score goals in the postseason. Overtime matches have plenty, five in their last six, and they're going to want to grind this match out and slow down the high-scoring Camels. Here's Moses Minza and how high-scoring this Campbell team is, averaging almost three goals a game while only allowing six goals in the first half all season. When we spoke to head coach Dustin Fonder, he said that's one thing that he had pointed out, of course, was that first 20 minutes. How big will that first goal be for either of these sides? We're already seeing Presbyterian committing 10 bodies back defensively, staggered with their lines, 4-4-2 formation in this matchup. And Campbell's going to have to be patient, pass the ball around, try to find some openings. And here's the chance for a counterattack for Presbyterian. Four on four, if they can work at Presbyterian. And there's Basafi Doty, one of the members of that Campbell back line that were so heavily awarded in the postseason award, swept them, Campbell did. Coach of the year, attacking player of the year, defensive player of the year, and scholar athlete. When you finish 8-0 in the regular season and have an RPI in the top 40 like Campbell does, you're going to be rewarded, and the coaches around the league certainly gave Campbell some huge honors with all these all-conference honors. Presbyterian themselves getting five honorees. Here's Moses Mensa, that defensive player of the year. He, as well as two other new members of the Campbell back four, have been dynamite defensively. Here's James. Slipping. And fouling Pinto. Sergio Pinto, number nine in blue, is a player to keep an eye on tonight for Presbyterian. Both him and Sancho, the two leading goal scorers, he's going to be excellent in set pieces with those five goals. And Campbell's going to have to certainly track number nine. There is Jalen James taken up on the right-hand side. And in the back of your shot, there is the man, Cesar Sancho. Leads this team in goals, very surprisingly, with six as a defender. Up from George Badico, the only controversial addition to this Campbell lineup. 
Otherwise, it's pretty standard to what we've seen all season. Here is the Ghanaian. This is a Campbell team that hasn't played in 13 days either. With the bye in the first round of the tournament, also with how the schedule unfolded, their last game was in early November against High Point. A chance to awaken here in this first half. Big stand from Sancho. Here comes that signature Presbyterian counterattack, snuffed out once again by Badico. Let's not forget, Badico started the final two games of the tournament last year. And Dustin Fonder has confidence in him. He wants to put him in these situations, and the junior has shown he can step up in these moments. Hugely important in Campbell's run last year. No goals conceded in the postseason for the Fighting Camels in their route to the Big South Championship. Johansson back into play. And Presbyterian, let's not forget, their MO is playing from behind. They've done an excellent job this year, conceding that first goal against Winthrop in the first round, coming right back and scoring the game winner in overtime to win 2-1. to one. This is right up their alley, and let's face it, when you've played four straight road matches in overtime, they're certainly accustomed to this style. And what a turnaround it has been for Presbyterian. Just five seasons ago, they had not won a game. In the 2015 season, they've certainly turned it around, looking to make their third straight Big South final appearance with a win on the road. Throw in for Mensa. It'll be a long pull. Not a long by Rees. Ball recycled back to Mensa. That left-footed service is denied. And of course, that turnaround for Presbyterian goes a lot to speak of head coach Potter's abilities to be able to take a Presbyterian team and form almost a dynasty in the Big South. Well, had Mazder success at Elon at his last stop. A couple tournament appearances, two championships, and he certainly knows how to build a program. Now, not many returning players this year from last year's club that made the final. That being said, he has a core about five or six returners, and Really implemented his system this year. That'll be a handball against Matt Block. And speaking of building programs, that's something that Dustin Fonder's looking to do here himself, returning quite a few players and looking to become a real powerful mid-major team. And a prime example, right? So Matt Locke, who was all-freshman team last year, now is a second-team all-conference player. He's just a sophomore. You have the freshman of the year as well for Campbell. There's a young nucleus to complement the likes of Gideon Betts and Ian Reese, the captains. Matt Locke, the Englishman, the second leading points getter in this side with 15. Of course, not within touching distance of the star striker, Thibaut Jacquel. Directly out of play, ball back with the Fighting Camels. What a run in it was towards the end of the season for Campbell as they got to play their final regular season match in a regular season decision game against High Point. Been 13 days since they played in that game. In fact, so much time they inter-squatted against themselves last Friday just to try to keep the energy up and to get some real game speed. Bazico. The only negative from Dustin Fonder in that whole stretch was there wasn't a lot of defense in that inter-squad. Plenty of goals scored, and that's what Campbell wants to do tonight, get up early and play from ahead. Back in for Moses. All that hard work has paid off for Campbell this season as they have moved into the top 30 in the rankings. Ranked at number 29 at the moment. So Ricardo Tercis, number six, he's playing the front position here, the front forward for PC. He's going to try to pressure the ball and create mistakes like this where Presbyterian can counter. Ball in for Tercis. Just misplaced back with the Fighting Camels. So he's third on the team with four goals. You have the two main strikers, of course, with Sancho and Pinto. But then you provide a good pressure on the ball and really trying to play that sunk, sunk it in style, that bunker, if you will, and then create the counterattack. Lock. His ball blocked. Of course, one thing Coach Fonder mentioned to us was being able to switch that point of attack. That's going to be crucial tonight. Here's a good ball. First touch is for Kleeb. German goalkeeper picking up big minutes. 
Just about 16, just over 1,600. 51 saves for the German in his first side. And now Mensa with the cheeky turn. Just a freshman in that left back position. And you can tell the footwork he has. He's very calm and stable. And Dustin Fonder, the Campbell coach, was telling us he looked Division One ready to make an impact from day one. And that seems to be the case here in his first season. Presbyterian throw on the far side. That's Luca Ziegler right there, a second team all conference performer. PC earning that number five seed, but really playing much better soccer in the final month. And Ziegler was a huge reason as that defensive midfielder. Ziegler in his 60th appearance tonight for the Blue Hose, and what an occasion it is. Tursus once again uh, unable to be found as the outlet. Here's Sam Lechuga. Perhaps the only snub from that first team. But then again, when a guy only faces a few shots a game, certainly skews his statistics. And High Point is a pretty quality keeper of themselves that Absolutely. we'll see in the other semifinal tonight against Gardner Webb. That match is also scoreless, so we'll definitely keep tabs on that as we go tonight because, of course, the two winners, then the highest seed remains, host the championship on Sunday. And as Campbell knows, coming in this match, Zach, if they want to make the NCAA tournament, their best road is to win here in two and not leave it up to the selection committee on that next Monday. Referee says no foul. James pulled back and we play on. Here's Mercer Miko. Referee no foul here. A few contentious calls, but we carry on. Dimitar Shadarov is playing a very fluid style. He's letting both teams get after it. He's going to let some physicality happen in this first half, and that's kind of what you want to see. You don't want to see the whistles blown too much in the first, what, 10-plus minutes. We'll see how that changes in the second half, but right now he's letting them play. Diallo there called offside, looking for the chip over the top. First on the night. We're back underway. Mensa Defensive Player of the Year. Hooking up with Locke. Goal and an assist in his first year, the Ghanaian. It's what he's been able to do off the ball. And as a defender, that's been so important. And we're seeing Campbell control about 95% of the possession right now. The key's going to be trying to find ways to create some channels in the middle and break down this defensive-minded Presbyterian club. Now into Mercer Miko. Campbell continuing to be patient. Here's Gideon Batts. He scored the deciding goal in the 2018 championship and turns the ball over here. Nice footwork done by Pinto. Tursis. Crucial intervention from Gideon Batts. Especially with Dapa cutting in from the far side. That's exactly what PC wants to do. Create those avenues, get some two-on-one opportunities, and then find a way to get a shot on target. Easier said than done against the best scoring defense in this conference. Here's Ian Rees, scored the game winner in Campbell's last time out against High Point, secured the regular season championship. Shaquelle closing down. He's yet to have any meaningful touches in this match. Lovely play from Mensa to draw the foul. Metz did a nice job of holding himself firm in his position, receiving the ball and not trying to lean forward. Then Dapa forced to punch into him a little bit, create that contact and an easy call. Mensa, the most influential player here in the early proceedings in Bowie's Creek. And of course, all the defenders are is Rees. Of course, that says a lot about this Campbell team, that their defensive players are so influential in the attack. Betts. Dispossessed once again, Hernandez. This is what PC wants to do right here. Play with numbers, play with speed. There's an offside, however. And Campbell, without their captain, 
falling down, dispossessed, able to get their back line in order and draw the offside. Not for the first time tonight. Presbyterian called offside. Gideon Betts not for the first time tonight, coming up with a defensive mistake there, pushing high up the field. And that's what Campbell coach Dustin Fonder warned us about leading into this matchup. You're almost playing yourself offensively. You can't overthink it, have to be precise, and then one mistake and boom, a counterattack can happen. Of course, all the pressure will be on Campbell tonight. That's something that was reiter reiterated to us by Coach Potter at home. One of their best seasons in program history. The impetus is on Campbell. It's been the best season since Gideon Betts was not even a year old, just to put that into some perspective. 25 years. Here is the German defender. Now Doty scored Campbell's lone goal in that 1-1 draw against the Tar Heels. And now Momo. Mercer Miko shuffling through traffic. Great footwork. Mercer Miko straight at Klebe. Could not get much on that shot. He does a great job of weaving through traffic. And then Alamu with a point blank chance right here. How about the ability to juke out one defender? He slides to the middle and then just not enough on that right foot. And I stopped by Klebe, but not enough to get it past him. First shot of the night for either side. Falls away of the Fighting Camels. By the way, worth noting, High Point has already scored in their matchup against Gardner-Webb, so the Panthers at home off to a 1-0 lead, and we see Mercer Miko a few seconds ago a chance to do the same, but not enough mustard on that shot. Luca Ziegler stands over this. Ziegler with three assists on the season leads the team. See Coach Potter in the background, watching on his side with an offensive set piece. To the back stick, a good ball, and the one-handed snag by Lechuga. So Sancho at six foot three has height, and he also has great timing of the ball in the air. We see it right there from Sancho heading it back in. Luckily for Lechuga, he had room to backpedal, but that's how he scored. All six of his goals have come in those set pieces. Ziegler with some smart play to watch that one out. And that's what Dustin Fonder warned. He said that you can defend so well, be in position, but sometimes great players can just overmatch or over quality your defensive effort. And that was almost the case right there. No handball call. And now Betts. Moses Mensa. Campbell still trying to get a touch on the ball for Thibaut Jacquel. He's been isolated. Of course, how do you think that conversation went down, deciding whether or not to mark one of the nation's leading scorers? Jalen James. And now Mercer Miko. Momo closed out. Well, it's not only Jaquel as well. It's a top five scoring team in the country. So you pick your poison a little bit. You slow down Jaquel. Then you have Locke and Elbistu and Aganu and guys that all have five-plus goals that can really impact the match even off the bench as well. This Campbell offense having a lot of joy. 34 goals since the start of October. Siegler gets it out. And here's Mensa again, pulling the strings from left back. Lock. Cutting. Working space. And our head referee getting a touch on the night. Shavdorov, the 12th defender for Presbyterian tonight. There's Campbell switching that attack. And winning a throw. Momo with four assists on the season from right back. Of course, offensively, Campbell finding goals and assists from all over the place, including their defense. And you are seeing Campbell push those two backs on both sides up the pitch a little bit, trying to spread the ball out, create some movement back and forth across the field, and that may be an avenue where they can find out space like this. Locke, his first time ball's denied. Good diagonal ball. Shaquell comes, and here's Abel. Yeah. 
Kept alive by Johansson. And this is Presbyterian's first real consistent possession. We sit now 20, 20 minutes into this half. A chance for them to really be able to hold the ball down and create some pressure on this Campbell back line. Let's not forget they scored two goals at home against Campbell. That was the most they conceded in any match this year in the conference. So we talk about how PC's been so battle tested. They also have confidence, a 6-2 loss, but they really hung in there for the first 60 minutes. It took a Thibaut Jacquel hat trick to down the blue hose. What will it take tonight? That was the 10th meeting between these two teams. Campbell now leads the series 6-5. to five. No ties in the series. We won't be having one tonight. The possibility of extra time and penalties. And that's what Presbyterian wants to do, right? They want to extend this match, slow it down, continue to camp 10 defenders in this box, and you see it right there. 